Alright my people, those that are in the listening and viewing area, I want to share a story with y'all, my own personal story of how I came to Harmony, Oklahoma, and all these things that happened in my past, kind of a personal history or what have you, and uh, I want to share that with y'all, and that, that way maybe y'all can better understand what my people or my generation group of Indians are made of and where they've been, what we've done, things like that. And like I said, basically how I got to Harmony, Oklahoma, and uh, all the things they had done, I want to give you all a brief history of that at this time. All right, let's go from day one of uh, what this is all about. That uh, it is important at this time. Uh, again, needless to say, uh, to do things like this because of the generations that are coming on, especially the grandchildren. And I know most of y'all, my age group, my generation, all are grandparents. Some are probably great-grandparents. I'm looking forward for that. So that's the story I want to start with from Carnegie at our great Kiowa country down there, Kiowa Nation. And those that will verify, or see me grow up, so to speak, will verify this information that I'm going to convey to you at this time. Uh, at a very early age, whenever I grew up there at home, I was very fortunate to grow up in a community uh, that was consisted of immediately our Sepahu family. There was about overall uh, seven, six or seven families there that were lived in one neighborhood right along the highway nine east of Carnegie. And that, our children, all the offspring, our Bobby, daughter, uh, we all grew up right there. We had our, so many of us, we had our own ball team and almost had our own church up there, Cedar Creek. And we all worked around there. And that's where I, yeah, that's my background. So I was fortunate in, uh, that I had parents that were new, they were really uh, educated, so to speak, in their own right, in their own way. I got, uh, Daddy, he was a real traditional man. He was Saint Piki, pure man. And Mother, she was a Christian. She represented Christian elements. She was a City Creek member up there, just walking distance, mile and a half, to our church up there where I grew up there also. So I had to get all back there when. And I happened to be born about a year after my own grandfather, my namesake, Doya Omoy, means good medicine. And he died, but he would immediately give me his name. So that's the name that I have to this day. And Gesami and his background, going back just a little, was that uh, he was a medicine man. And then he lost a son in a, uh, as a result of an injury that he received playing football. And... Uh, he reverted over to, or converted over to Christianity and became one of the first ordained Kiowa or Indian ministers in Southwest Oklahoma. So I have that in my background too, which is good. So with those things in mind, as I gather, the first day of school started. And that's where there was a new world waiting on me that I didn't know. Go on and get that time. I will go. Uh, we got on a school bus. They took us down there to the big building, the red building. At that time, we had one of those old-timey four-story buildings set right there in town. That's the first time we knew about other people 
their ways and what they look like, uh, how they act and like that. And I guess that was kind of vice versa deal, really, in a lot of ways. So I remember in those very early days that uh, I guess you'd say whenever we went to town and whenever we played football out there in the schoolyard, we always had Indian stands of whites, and it was really interesting. And uh, it was pretty heavy feeling at that time. And on the hot cog, whenever we, we made friends with Okoyokoyogu, you know, they, they didn't go for that, or, or people, or sisters, or even some of our brothers. And, uh, and the hot cog, it really bothered us, some of us, because we had a lot of good friends. Now, of course, we had to go through that, and we went through that, through this thing of education, and go, Yentozanma, he got put a thing at Haig, right there around that school belly. He got here, Ikea, right there, we went through the elementary level, and then we got into junior high, and then high school. He got, oh, the Kakum, they go, Dodd, most of us right there, uh, all my aunts that live around there, and my uncles, and the their kids. So he got there, oh, he got here. Get high again. What's going on in the world, in the Koi world, the overall Indian world, and then the Okoi world, which is very, which was very important. That's why I go we went to school, and we were lucky. Our folks supported most of us. They said, Ah, go, I got to get him to buy more him to pay go and get high go. I know boy, it's all go. You guys learn what you can, because we're not here with y'all all the time. We're not going to be with y'all. Someday you're going to be on your own, you're going to have families, but candy tell you're all going to go out into the world. And don't tell them where you're going to wind up. And it's interesting because these people, elders at that time, seemed like they knew what was going to happen to us. And just about that time, a war broke out. It seemed like, as I remember, my early life, livelihood at Carnegie was centered around guys to get around the war. And so I remember the hard times, the ration stamps we had, and how we had to borrow from each other wood and, and sugar and salt and things like that. And it was just, it was really hard time, but it was interesting. So that's what we all came through, those people on, in my generation group, which are in the 70s now, that got to see some of these things that happened back there. And it was real. It was very strong and it influenced our lives. At that time. So that's what I want to convey to you all up to this point in time. Then that's why we got into school and that's why we stayed in school. So I'll probably go talk, get a dog, my dog, get a green, go on by a dog, the grandpas and the other elders, they go here, they tie it on what was very, very important and we didn't really understand it, but now we knew what it was. They go to his bus dog and they said, I got to talk to you on, but more him. On God dog, he have a son, he never had a monster hot dog. He get pale dog, he go he de. Oh, he got dog, he got up and point. Oh, he de pale. I got to hold on, but more him. Have a good dog, oh, they go by candy dog. Ah, he go he have a good dog, they go on the get come, they go by don't, they go by taunt dog. They only get come the dog, each eye dog, God dog, get up a day. They go, you want to talk about hide it all, but don't we get come to the door then. They say, so you learn all you can now, and later on when you're here alone, you will be able to get along with these people that the God put in charge, and then all the talk call the white people. So y'all gonna have to learn their way of life and to follow them. Bah, oh boy, oh boy, don't we get this to buy to one time, but I ain't got on go get come, but to her buy door. And get high, got I got the, he got so hot, okay, I come the, up a table. So the same thing works on both sides, of the Indian or especially down here the Kiowas, and the non-Kiowas. That there are some good people, there are some bad people. Through this education process, you will be able to better judge and to know which one to support, which one to go with, the good or the bad, and you'll be able to figure this out. So I think that's one of the strongest concepts that I've learned at an early age, and I never forgot it. Took it with me all my life, and I still have that. So that's the first part I wanted to share with y'all of my early life in regards to beginning education. Ah, cool. Any call to get off. 
everybody grow up. So we grew up there, and we all kind of entered this adolescent level. And it was interesting that the one thing in that level that I don't know other tribes will agree or had their own way because we have this thing of a value system that we call with all different tribes and what have you. So this thing that I noticed that at that time we were growing up at uh, what I'll call it, uh, our teachers or whatever you told us and showed us that we were changing now. We were thinking kind of uh, in that level of uh, entering into that uh, junior high state teenage level. You go here, I'm going to go sign, I'm going to sign at that time. But one thing that was very important that I regret that I wish our folks would have done a little better job, some of them may have, or some, I know my folks didn't, they missed it, were telling us things that how manhood goes, how, how it works with the uh, manhood and the womanhood, I guess so to speak, of courting, holding hands and things like that. And they didn't cover that too good for us at all. So what we had to do as, as to, and I hope the boys, the men, we had to learn on our own. And we're talking about the pool halls and down the uh, basketball, football dressing rooms. We picked those things up ourselves. So I remember now, that's a very strong point of a person turning, going, transforming from man, uh, boyhood to, to, to manhood. Well, we missed that at home. And what we picked up was there at the school. So the white people, to be specific, our teachers in particular, are the ones that if they didn't cover that thoroughly in the health courses and biology, then we missed it. We was blank. And that hurt a lot of us. We had to learn on our own later on as we grew, went through the process of growing up. So all, all, all here they about go, about believe, all here they get go by our folks while I was growing up. And I wish to, I wish, I regret, I wish to, they, would have, they would have covered that a little better. But somehow, some way, here we are. We made it through that period of growing up, I guess, so to speak. So all Paha, I hope now y'all will do a better job there, especially at home, of teaching your kids a little more about how they come to being born and why they're here. Oh, but they on there, y'all need to cover that. And maybe other tribes, you might remember this too, and you, with your, your group, that be sure in, in your value systems to add this in there of that transformation changing from boyhood, so to speak, to manhood. Or what that what is going on now? How come you have your feelings are a little different now about the opposite sex and things like that? Now that's important, and that's where I'm at myself as a grandpa now. And I've got three that are coming up at a very young age, and I'm doing my best now to try to teach them every so often what the difference between the boys and the girls and all these feelings that they might don't under, quite understand now. But that is part of growing up, as we all know. So those things are very important. That, our people that are working with us in a catalyst form, the like teachers and coaches, need to know also and explain explicitly to the children, our Indian children, what that thing means. That there's a law later on that you can't do this, do that with the opposite sex. Those things need to be covered thoroughly in our public school education. Not only here in Oklahoma, but the whole world, really, what we're talking about. That somehow, for some reason, that is not covered too thoroughly with our Indian uh, way of life, so to speak, that we have. Do you think that was different at one time, traditionally? I call it a Kia, though, is that, uh, however, with this value system that we're talking about, I heard through my parents and the grandparents how it used to be before the Okoy came, before we had the teachers and coaches, what have you, that we had our own, and I'm pretty sure all the other tribes had their own at that time, and at that time, it was very, very strong that our Kaiwa Koihoan, way about these relationships, very strong. Uh, like, for instance, you couldn't uh, uh, touch your own cousin, your own sister. Uh, you had to respect them in more ways than one. And, uh, of course, you couldn't marry, and you had to get approval. And at that time, the Indian marriages were very popular. My, my parents got married in Indian way. And at that time, they kind of put it like, uh, like the soldier. That they gave way for it, bringing them four horses and went heavy in. And that's how they got dead. They came after, they came after my dad down at Carnegie from Cash Creek. My mother grew up in a district south of Carnegie, about 16 miles. And uh, 
that's where he she come from and uh, I guess he saw dad and I got that one struck or something and they came after him and dad couldn't turn him down his, his daddy said yeah go ahead he's eligible so they took that so that was the Indian way that they got married at that time well of course that nest was all get a black and white different besides the uh, uh, contemporary value system that we got had to had to learn and to know what the things that we go through today. So that's how strong it was at that time. So you can take it from your own of the other things that connected with our value system for relationship was concerned. But I remember it got very strong as we grew up through junior high and high school that our our own brothers and sisters they they just couldn't stand any of us boys in particular of seeing us hold hands with a white girl. That's how strong it was, and it was at during our junior high level, and also at the high school. I'll give you another example. I was elected one of the football captains to crown our queen at halftime, and before that, I heard some things very strong, and other factors involved. So when it was my time to go out and crown the queen at halftime, I did not go. <laughs> not too many people know the real background, but y'all are here to this day. Later on, I got bombed by my fellow students who were having more ways than one, but that was the underlying reason. I was, I was behind anyhow, and, but I, I, I decided not to go. And I, I'll publicly apologize to Betty Wright. She was a queen. I didn't get to crowd her. So they sent out the other captain, so to speak, or the one that was studying for me. But that's how strong it was. But I couldn't stand the booze and the raw raws and what have you that came with that. But I heard some of that afterwards, and it was true that they could they made fun of me, and I couldn't stand it at that time. Very sensitive. But that's another example of how bad it was at that time, racially and what have you. And that's what we all had to kind of come through and go through. And sometimes I have a backlash on that even to this day. But it's the truth. Since we're talking about truth, it's part of our educational processes that we need to improve in our classroom now because of like my grandson coming up got a couple of them now so i want them not to go through what i went through but to go over here and that's not necessarily say it's the best or whatever but it's the one that's working today for all of us so in our classrooms and public classrooms especially here in the state of oklahoma since we have most indians now i believe than any other state and uh, that's what we need to know for about uh personally from somebody that knows which i think i know enough about now because I've come through all that, that part of the value system in some ways that was cruel for a lot of us, but we make the breakthrough, we come through, and here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and this, this is a biggie, one of the biggest, as far as I'm concerned in my life, how I turned from being Kiowa to a non-Kiowa, so, so to speak, in more ways than one. And I happen to like athletics real well because dad, he was, he got disabled way back there. He couldn't farm and what have you. So he said, you're kind of on your own, son. I'm sorry about that. But whatever you want to try to do, we'll support and help you. Well, I had an uncle, Jesper Doya. And he's the one that really helped me in more ways than one. Taught me, and this is like a big brother. He took me under his wing and helped me in more ways than one. He's the one who taught me how to be Indian and non-Indian. And uh, so he happened to be talented in, in athletics. So we used to do all the playing, catching with him and things. And all of a sudden, I, said, I began to pick that up. So I was kind of a self-made athlete. But Uncle Jasper was responsible directly for me. So from there, we go to advance a little more in regards to moving into another level. And that level was whenever I, got, I graduated from high school. And at that time, my last spring, I was headed for Haskell Institute at the time up at Lawrence, Kansas, like the rest of those people at that time was graduated. Also, some of them were going to be home, things like that. So, Mama said, well, all right, now, we're going to have to do something here. So, I was kind of fortunate there where the folks realized we come to the end of the line on that part. Well, after high school, what are we going to do now? So, we went up to Ed Arco, to BIA office, and Mom signed me up for Haskell. She said, well, you're going to go to Haskell and, and learn a trade. And I was going to be a sign painter or something like that. So I was headed that way. All right, during that, it was in January, I believe, about midterm there. 
And then we graduation came in the springtime. During the springtime, when the big thing happened, the big bomb went off. Well, it just so happened that my coach, high school coach, and last year, Bill Joe Allred, bless his heart, he was graduate, recent graduate of Oklahoma A&M at that time. And a lot of us were familiar with Oklahoma A&M. They had very good football teams at that time. And there was one, and there was Bob Finnemore. He was from Woodard. He was an All-American, a couple of years All-American. And we all, whenever we played football outside, what have you, we all said it was Bob Finnemore. But I remember that name, Oklahoma Aggies. Now, the Sooners, for some reason, wasn't in my mind at all at that time. Now, we heard about Indian Jack Jacobs over there. He was a Creek Indian, incidentally, All-American. Now, we heard of him. But the Sooners were still struggling. That was all oh, back 46, things like that. They were still a member of the Big Six like Oklahoma. But Oklahoma and then what got, got, me, got me going, got me rattled. Well, it just so happened at that time they had tryouts. And, of course, they got a different process and what have you now. But at that time, they took you up to just like it's a pro camp now for, pro, for tryout. So the, one day, Coach came in and he said, I want the senior boys in here. And so he called for us and, Said, all right, we got some, I got something here. If you guys are interested, we'll do it. Said, my school up to heaven tryouts this Saturday. If some of you guys want to go, you hold your hand up. We'll take your name. We'll meet down here at school. We'll get the bus. We'll go up there. We'll try out. You never know. You just might be lucky and hit something up there. We all raised our hand. I was one of them. Said, I want to go. Said, all right, let's help. make a long story short. They took us to Stillwater. First time I come this side of Oklahoma City at that time. But it was all good for <laughs> all the happy guys. Anyhow, make a long story short, we had our tryout. And at that time, there were 65 in my group. And, make a long story short, there was about five that uh, they offered a scholarship to, and I was one of them five. And uh, so from there, the world began to turn. So when they announced that night at the Oklahoma A&M, St. Louis Billikens basketball game, the winners, and they called us out to the middle of the arena, they introduced us, and took us into Lucky Ball's office. That's when my world and my life changed right there. And to this day, I'm thankful to Dog E, the good Lord, and happy that way. I'll never forget that. And ironically, here recently, they had a powwow in that same big Hall arena now. And uh, I uh, spoke for one of the kids there, and I mentioned it to the people that was there that this was the direct pla exact place I stood several years ago as a young Indian fellow from Carnegie and accepted a offer to play football here uh, at Oklahoma A&M in, like, there in 1950. And that's where Mike Echo and they ain't on, they ain't on yet at that time. My life changed. It turned. But it's a big turn, complete turn. Now that would not have been possible had you not graduated high school. So, if you would, talk about the importance of finishing high school. Okay. I had a good time. And I had a It's important that you guys that are going to school now, learning, and trying to help yourself, go ahead and do it. Do it if you feel like it. And that's why you got to learn and be in school at your desk every day, attend your classes, Keep a good attitude, strong attitude, and you got to be goal oriented. You got to be thinking of something down the road. Although our seemed like it was so far away to become an All American football player, baseball player, what have you, there at home, it was a goal. And you got to have that. You got some kind of goal, setting up something you can look forward to, to kind of see, besides over here, how you hold about the tall car and all that madness that goes on. We can't, we, you know, that's not going to count. So you're going to have to get in that school and stay in there. Uh, you'll get an opportunity the same way. So that is very, very important. Has been and still is and going to be in your in your lifetime. And that's why you've got to look around and learn and don't forget some of these things. A lot of it has already happened to you and that's good. But we're talking about the smaller group that's coming on now, especially people that are in high school now and getting ready to go out into the world. You might keep this in mind at this time. This is kind of far-fetched, but it's something that I feel that like our public school system, since I'm experienced school teaching and what have you, and with the public education here in Oklahoma, that somehow in our curriculum development, what have you, we missed this thing of uh, your your own people having your improving your identity, 
your image and the self-conflict of our Indian people, including yourself personally and all your brothers, sisters, and what are your family there at home, that we got to improve those three things that I believe are very important in your lifetime. And you might say those three things again, because I think you, you said conflict when you meant concept. So run through those three things for us. All right, so again, we go through those three factors, learning factors, or whatever you want to call them, that's very, very important. One is your identity, one is your image, one is your self-concept, how you think about yourself. They get key at all those very things, and that's what our people, especially the teachers, the educators that are working with our Indian children, understand that thoroughly, know what it's all about, and then work on that thing, and I guarantee you, you'll, it'll pay off in the end. Ah, Cole, this is one of the strongest parts, I believe, of growing up as an Indian and trying to make it in this today's, today's world. Not back there, what I'm really talking often about, going through childhood, but today and tomorrow. These are the ones that really count now that you people need to know about. Probably heard about it already, sick of hearing it at home or what have you, but it is true. So I'm going to run this by for you and with you at this time. All right, so all of a sudden, my life changed, and the scholarship offer, and what away we went. So that summer, they sent me a letter, said, you come on down to the first day of practice, middle of August, and away we went. Folks took me, dumped me off, and went into the dorm, and uh, there they were, the rest of my five years, buddies were there. We were way up there on the fifth floor, and what have you. At that time, they set freshman teams. And so I was a freshman group, naturally. So we stayed in that dorm, I don't know which one it was, but one now, we just hung in there, and I hung in there for about five or six days. And then a few things happened that kind of rocked the boat that uh, a lot of us didn't seem to approve. One big thing happened was during the summer, that coach that recruited us was gone. He quit, died or something, and uh, everything changed. So the coaching staff came from Georgia, and they were trying to make an Im impression and uh, he was pretty mean, that man. He started slapping the, our, the big varsity guys around, and we saw some of that, and we kind of got scared out. So a lot of them start leaving, <clears throat> and uh, I was one of them. I couldn't stand it to see that and go to live with that, so we all took off and we transferred schools. That's where I, I left Stillwater and why I left Oklahoma A&M at that time. Well, there were some other schools that had a list of these guys that dropped out or washed out, and I was on that list. So this school... Uh, uh, Weatherford Southwestern had an opportunity, had some scholarships offered. I went up there, and they, I couldn't get one out of there. So Panhandle State, the guys that also got my name, they came down after me. And they said, hey, man, you're not doing nothing. We got your name here. We're going to load you up. Before I knew it, they were packing me in the car. And away I went to Panhandle State University. And that's where I finished my schooling, to make a long story short. So I was thankful for them guys helping packing me in that car and taking me out to Panhandle State University. Now, the biggest thing that hit us was being away from home for the first time. And homesickness is very simple. And I left that school four times. <laughs> and uh, the last time it was beginning to snow, and when I, you know, it's up there in the area up there, and it's from western Oklahoma, extreme western Oklahoma. And it was snowing at that time. I was on a bus at Liberal getting ready to come on down this way. And my gang from school came after me. And while the motor was running, they helped pull me off that bus, and I'm glad they did. And then we got back in the car and went back to the school. And it was the last time that I got homesick to go away from, to lose something that I would have regretted all my life. So we got back to the school, checked in, and away we went. And that next Saturday, we had our first game. And that's where life really changed. And I had took new direction at that time. So I'm hoping things like that will help some people when they come to that crossroad. So right along with that, we have to think about what happens now when you get back into your environment, new environment that you're in. So when we got back there, I had to adjust to a lot of things. And that's where these things of, of uh, distractions that can happen. And you're going to have to really work against these things. That's where your friendships, your relationship with your buddies, and what have you at the school are very important. And this is where you have to learn to stand on your own feet. You are alone now. So you have to understand 
your buddies who you choose, who you don't choose, uh, certain ways that certain free. You got a lot of freedom that you not have had before in that way. So you have to choose your buddies who's going to be drinking, who's not drinking. Things like that are all there. So very tempting as such, but you're going to have to make your decision at that time and be more goal-oriented, like we mentioned before, or knowing what you really want later on. And of course, as an adult now, having all that experience, that you have to have a goal, and that with day on the it goes along with being goal-oriented, and later on you're going to get a job or whatever. So at that time, when I went there at that particular school, Coach and I had a talk later on, and it was very important, very good, and that's where he brought out some of these things I'm talking about now. And he said, you got to have to be goal-oriented, say, behold, and what you're really doing is uh, what do you have What do you have in mind? So well, I said, well, I still want to stay in athletics. I'd like to become a coach. He said, well, it can happen. So what you're doing here, Evan Ray, is that you're learning that we're going to teach you that way. So later on in life, you'll go out and get a job and make your way in life. You'll have a family someday. This could be your means of support. So all you hear get all, it's all get all that's behind it. That's really what they're telling you. So any the kekum the good lords or uh omoik ekum the da you know the coat the kekum the da uh yan high get out the good salt you can get on to the go or or he the pay the game kia point you know to go hunger he goes all e got on to sign and what have you con give later on he gave the park he get out or he did all get get down at at that time. So all it is so hard I take to keep eye dog, I dog. So that's what our non Indian people taught us and taught me at that time that you're going to have to be or, or goal-oriented, learn that way because it's the one that's going to be beneficial. This way of life is going to be more beneficial, beneficial to you later on in life. Well, you're going to eventually come up through the rank like that and have a family, have children, and it's going to be your way of support when you get that job. So all here is all you get done. Uh, of course, all you get dog or get don't come there that when you get into school, you guys, you got to find an ally. You got to find somebody that you can talk to, your coach, uh, one of the instructors, what have you, even your own own teacher. You, you, at that time, you should be developing a minor field at that time, so maybe those people in there can help you. Of course, they'll give you an advisor. Sometimes you like, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you understand, sometimes you don't. But try to find somebody that you can lean on and turn to for any pertinent, relevant questions you might have as far as your process is concerned going to school. Uh, this goes right along with that thought concept that we're talking about. Is that <clears throat> your identity is very important and important to all of us and it's going to be with you all your life. Matter of fact, these three factors that I did we've talked about earlier are going to be with you all your life right or wrong good or bad and it can be with you whether you're Indian or non-Indian they both from my own experience personal experience I want to nail those down and make sure my my own understands these things that hit the echo on the door and my dog and that's the way it is life and death saying it's that strong it's going to be here a long time it's here now and it's going to continue to be here after we're long gone just like echo on the I talk about that a second when I'm thinking about it Life, nobody really knows when it came. There's no data on that. But it's still here, and it's going to be, it's going to continue. That's what we believe in. But the thing that happened over in Bethlehem is another story, and whether we believe that and live with that, we don't know, which we all are aware of at this present day and age, as Indians and non-Indians, and that's where we're at. So my students... Or potential students, I want to make sure you understand that thing of uh, conflict with your own uh, with your own self in regards to making sure that you understand why you're there at school or wherever you are taking training, maybe vocate. Uh, it don't have to be necessarily a, a regular four-year school, college, what have you. It can be at a trade school. But all these factors we're talking about apply to our Indian people, as I see it. Some of our weak in weakness and some of our strength. But again, we have to be careful about these distractions that are going on around you 24 hours out of the, out of the day. And we're talking about this while ago, you can go to class, nobody there to push you. And again, these things are there. 
you can fool with whatever crowd you want to fool with. And so you have to be careful, but you got to be old goal oriented. I'm sold on that. You got to know what you're doing, be able to go with both of them, to weigh them out, which is which, which is the best, uh, going to work for you, which is not going to work for you. So the sooner you understand and learn that, the better off you're going to be and you're going to reach your goal. There's a, there's a hard way and the wrong way and there's a good way and the right way. So that's what you're going to have to judge for your own self from day to day with whatever you are doing to get there. So that is very, very important, not only as an Indian, but as a non-Indian, because it works both ways. I'm going to call your daughter and your hands, hands again, daughter. And this also adds to my story of uh, Indian way versus the non-Indian way, really. So this is where it's at in regards to making up your mind which way you're going to go, which one's most important. You know, to get saw me, this is, this is one I had this real struggle with, and I'm glad I did, and my reasons for it. Well, at the time, one example, at, we was at the Goudal at Walters, and all my sisters were there, and my five and we were having a big time. But I remember that this morning I had a test over that school. I was in summer school down in Southwestern. So when I could get Paul I'm getting, I was all hollering and carrying on. And I told my bunch, I said, all right, I got to leave now. And boy, they all screamed at me and throw beer cans at me and what have you. And, oh, you're trying to be a white man. You ain't white man. You ain't going to make it. You're no good. But anyhow, I took off, got my old hoop, and I took off back home from Walters to Weatherford. You know, it was a long way. But I got there when it was getting kind of in the morning. And I got, I got to school the, the day I say the gig I went to class. But anyhow, these things I thought was most important was to get to school at that time, and the good dogs, they're always around, and they still are around. So, But most of those guys that made fun of me and cussed me and what have you, they're all gone. But anyhow, I just wanted to kind of mention those things. Oh, 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 oh by the time they talk, when you all get to that point, you got to make up your mind which is most important, this way or that way. That's what we're talking about. At that time, and it depends on what kind of training you've had in the past that will include your parents and all those people that was influential with your life up to that point. He called it the Ekum the Daw at that time. He called the Ekum the On the Gelm the Haw, so all go tame the all go beg the get Daw. You're going to have to use your own teachings, your own feelings in regard to what you really want to do. And that's the question I really wanted to. Do and you need, go, oh yeah, it's going to depend on your parents too, how strong you feel it. That's why I might mention I was pretty lucky with my parents. So when I told them I'm going to Stillwater for that tryout and what I was going to do, then they said, all right, you go ahead because it's going to be your life now. And so you do whatever, whatever you think is best to do. And Dad, he was the traditional Indian, and he didn't say too much. He just said, well, I don't know too much about those things of college and what you what you, what you told us why you're going, and but I'm with you all the way because it sound it sounds good, and I've seen a few things happen in that line, and I think if that's what you want. You go ahead, we will or I will support you, and mother same way she was all for it all the way because she understood a little better than dad about the Tokoy horn, the horn that was prevalent at the time. The way was the Tokoy way. So the end, he go go there, get dog, he go get boy taught. I said, our way down here gonna be that way. It's gonna always be here. So whenever you come back, you will be part of that. I said, yeah, I sure will. And that's exactly what happened. So you kids, you people are getting ready to move on into that world. These are the very important things you've got to remember and you've got to do. And your parents also, they can't be left out. You are a very integral part of your children, your siblings' life. Needless to say. So all party got I got about doing it. All right, you got about tall time. You go with it. So you're gonna have to help your kids together, work at it together about these things that's gonna come up whenever they leave home. So all he did about all high up at this time that you all know what I went through and how I work with these things. And those things are still prevalent to this day, as you all know. So you know the cat comes and all that's what happened to me in my life. So when the all car came after me, well. I didn't argue. Before I knew it, Mom was helping them put put my bags in that car, and away we went. And that's all I needed for motivation at the time that they approved of what I was trying to do. So when I got out there and I left four times, and the last time that the boys came after me, my old buddies from the dorm, and loaded me up in the car, took me home. That was it. I thank them for their lives. They know who they are. 
for a show that's still alive out there somewhere in western Oklahoma. That, uh, that's where my echo and my life changed whenever that happened. So it probably will happen to you in some ways, and uh, I wish you luck. So I'll hit it by and we'll take on that life. For that group that already coming along with me, and you go hang it again, all that regards to which way we're going to go now and how much higher or more we can learn and why. So this is in, just as important because at this day and age, after you get your a bachelor's degree, the first higher step you're going to make, you still got opportunities to go higher and go a lot, it's a lot easier after that also that you can get more and do more on another level, which is the master's level, and then above that is the doctorate level, eight comma, okay. Oh, they got day and high get out the mount I got oh, the Honda get door. That's what that means. So all hungry goes right with it. You be making more income, making better, living a lot better, doing a lot better with a lot. Then they will be allowed to do these things. Oh, they talk about home one day. Oh, they guys going off. For for I'm personally concerned is it's in kind of in my area where I was lucky to get that, get the other degree, the master's degree. So I'll probably go try to hang it away because but get things on on that level. They allow us to do different things then, more so than we can at a lower level. So I hit it all get bit though avoid all cause home one day the high on the get get down by get more go hang down by hang down get down more and that's what we need to be doing more of that with our tribal governments as well encouraging our youth to go on and why are we encouraging them. So most of my bunch now I tell them, get all you can get. And all here they get all specifically, we're talking about a master's degree, we're talking about a doctorate degree and what have you, on down the road. So all here then, that's why it's important that you guys are going to school now and doing things that you continue. You continue and get it all if you can. So that's what I've been telling my own in particular of why they're in school, what they're really doing. I've got two, get, I got one in college now, and one hopefully will go back to school in the very near future. And that's what I'm hitting him over the head with my grand one and my grandson, that he needs to go on to continue and get all he can get while he can. And it's easier also being single, I might add that in there. So the guys that are getting love struck, you better hold off a while and go to school and get your education first. Then the other's going to be there forever. And I was lucky there. That's what the folks kind of taught me while I was going to school. I, my boat rocked a couple of times. I almost gave up, but they always, they, they were behind me. Like I said, they, they, they understood a new life in that way that what I was doing was very important. If not important at the time I was doing it, later on it was going to be important, and that's what was good. That's what happened. So after I put in my bachelor's degree, got out of the Army, which is another story in itself, my military experience. But I was lucky there. My coach talked to me again. He was a good friend of mine. At the same time, when I graduated from school, I said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, so we started talking about it, and he told me about solely life, the military life. So I went that way, to make a long story short, for a couple of years. Then I came back, and I went to him again. He happened to be up, Steve was still alive, still at school. I called him and talked to him, and he, at that time when I left school, he said, well, when you get out of, out of military, where well, you call me, I'll, I'll help you get a job. All right. So sure enough, I finished two years. The military and all top off by how I told you. There's another story in itself. I went to Europe, got out of there, and came home. Luckily, I didn't go to combat in Korea, but it was during that time it was the aim top. But they were still shooting over there. But I was lucky I finished. I came back and I called him, make a long story short, and I talked to him. And he said, Well, anyway, hold on. Call after that. He told me the way and told me the way to so I could go to graduate school. They had a special program that they wanted people in there to get started on a master's degree through GI Bill. So I was lucky I had some years accredited to me on the BGI bill, so I went on to school there at Southwestern. So I hit it. That's how I done it. So I went on to school and went a whole year round. That's when I missed I was right in the middle of the good dog, but I was, in some ways I was not with it. But anyhow, my sisters and brothers, they understood what I was trying to do. So I was lucky in about a year's time, I went all the way around, and I got my degree there, master's degree. Then it got assaulted, but I went to work. So I they got oh, they call the hand to get into all later on. But that's the importance of, of higher education and the reason why you guys that are trying to climb, you keep a climbing until you get there. You'll know when you get there. Ah, cool. 
This brings us down to the tail end of the story that I'm trying to tell you all that involves the schooling and education. Automatically, comes with it. So I'm not saying I'm an expert and know it all, but I've been around quite a bit. But say to get don't call me go so like ekum da le alhaiga do. So I've been in the military too, and I know the thinking of or to call bodies in there. And a lot of it is good, but we have to be careful all the time. Don't let it clash with our Indian way or or conflicts with it in your mind and hold you back. So you, but again, with your training that you have at home from the elders and your folks. And then at the school that you're attending or institution, whatever, then these things are really important. That you have to weigh them out and set your priorities, work your priorities, and away you go. But the underlying thing that I want to mention that really becomes other things which I'm in now is in the form of leadership. Oh, they get oh boy, they echo them, oh boy, they in that way. And the leadership can come all the way from the drum and work all the ways out. That at whatever level you're on and whatever. Whatever your condition is, the family, and as a member of the tribe, and whatever you're doing, right or wrong, good or bad, it all comes out in the form of leadership. So I had to get home, get there. You're going to be a leader with your own group there at home, or you're going to branch out from there. So all these things that we're talking about, especially education, higher education, what have you, that's where it comes to. It's the, the end result is leadership. Ketai Hoan. We got to have some Ketai that knows exactly what to do and what not to do. So all Pahog, it all dot home so you seem like we kinda of falling behind our special there to get home. My Kai was all go, but don't do at this time. That I got to but don't it I get to be Kaleo on behind so I know you all tar that word but I have to mention it too. Oh he did get all I pay the dot home so it go more but but bo on my we can't be doing that. We got to learn to understand each other, work together, help each other, just like the elders taught us. Now, all you guys in my generation that are listening and reviewing understand that that's what they taught us, our elders, and they said, all right, and the kekum, the daw, how, ki, ah, ki, ki, go, he, to, to, he, got, to, pay, go, the, hi, he, go, hi, ba, to, or, he, to, long, get, hi, there's no timetable on life that our people mention to it. So that's where we are. <laughs> Right here, right, ladies and gentlemen, we have some of the world's finest snacks here with us. And I look to observe them and recognize them as past winners at this very celebration. The new celebration, competition dancing to a high degree. So tonight we as an audience will witness some of our uh, new champion dancers taking part to here the celebration this year at RSU. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 